Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are continuing our off-season previews of college football teams with Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. He, of course, is the perfect guy to do this stuff with because he's not following baseball or any other sport. Only college football is what he does all year long, and uh, the results uh, you know, tell the whole story with him. He's had a great record at his site for many years now. Steve, thanks for being back with us. Thank you for having me back, Peter. All right, before we uh, discuss Michigan, which is the team that we're going to discuss right now, uh, give a quick plug for uh, collegefootballwinning.com and tell everyone uh, how well you've done these past few years. I would be happy to, Peter. Thank you. At collegefootballwinning.com, as you said, all we do is college football betting analysis, 365 days a year. Our formula, uh, and that's where a company founded on, on making our betting selections formulaically or algorithmically, Last year, 2013-2014, finished 66.18% against the spread. Lifetime, our formula is 63.04% against the spread. The time to join us is definitely now when you can uh, get us for the entire season. I think we're the only service that offers a 100% money-back guarantee on the entire season, if you don't profit the entire season. So go to collegefootballwinning.com. Put in coupon code SBR10, that's SBR10, and you'll get 10% off of any membership that we're currently offering. Okay, Oops. sounds good. Michigan is the first team we're going to discuss, and uh, right now I'm seeing Michigan at market-wide about 80-1 to 1 to win the BCS in 2015. That puts them uh, in the mid-20s in terms of rankings. And last year they were overall kind of a, a middling team. They were 7-6 and six against the spread and 6-7 and seven over-under, but at home their offense was um, a lot stronger, and on the, on the road it was a lot weaker, and as a result they were an under-trender on the road and a bad bet um, against the spread, and at home they were a good bet on and an over trender so uh you know 80 to 1 what's your take on michigan uh, for the upcoming season okay well since we are your facts are good and since we are talking about a, a betting preview we're really going to look at two things their season against the spread possibilities and national championship futures so we wrote an article and we you and i recorded a video uh conditions for profitable college football betting as a little earlier this past spring and there are three principles we're looking for when we're considering uh, a team that might have a great against the spread season. We want the team to be unranked by the preseason polls, namely the AP. It is quite possible that Michigan will be unranked in the 2014 AP preseason poll when it comes out in a couple of months. Uh, number two, we want that team to have been unprofitable the prior against the spread season. Michigan was, as you said, seven and six against the spread. So they were barely profitable, just one game, oh, over 50% there. And the third thing is we want to see an increase in their straight-up wins from the prior season. Well, Michigan had seven straight-up wins in 2013. Beating seven straight-up wins in 2014 is realistic for Michigan. It's not out of the realm of possibility for them. The last two times Michigan won just seven straight-up games in a season, they rebounded with 11-win seasons Let's talk about Brady Hoke, their head coach, for a moment. Since coming to Michigan in 2011, Hoke has been a profitable 55.26% against the spread. However, that figure is a bit misleading because it's all predicated on or it's dependent on his first season where he really surprised. The last two years, he's been exactly 50% against the spread. That's obviously unprofitable. He has been very profitable since he's been there at home, as you said. 66.67% against the spread, winning two-thirds of their games against the spread at home. But he's been unprofitable, winning at a rate of just 41.18% against the spread away since he's been there. In 2014, Michigan is going to be without a four-year starting left tackle, a right tackle with 36 starts, their leading running back for the last three years, a single-season school uh, record-holding receiver, and that's just the offense. 2013's rushing yards per carry average for Michigan was the lowest since 1999. Now, despite those offensive tackles who were starting at Michigan for as long as Hoke has been their head coach, 2013's offense, their offensive line allowed 36 sacks. That's as many as 2011 and 2012 combined. To give you an idea of what that translates to against the spread, last five Big Ten teams who allowed more than 35 sacks in a season beat the spread at a collective rate of just 35.71%. So that is abysmal. They've got to improve there. So what I'm saying is 2014's young offensive line and only four out of the five projective starters, or not only, 
four out of five rejective uh, offensive line starters, excuse me, are underclassmen. And they could determine Michigan's against the spread here. So the season conclusion is there are basically two ways, as I see it, for Michigan to be profitable against the spread in 2014. One is to sneak up on the betting line. So that young offensive line could perform very poorly in the first half of the season, but continually improve as young, talented, well-coached units do. And then we could sneak up and, and do well the second half of the season with Michigan. Or they can improve on their straight-up wins from 2013. And in other words, beat expectations. So look for – here's what here's the canary in the, ma- in the mind for Michigan. First three games, look for the rushing yards per carry to average – at least six and a half. So six and a half yards per carry the first three games. That sounds really high, but Michigan is following a typical formula to begin their season, and that is play two cream puffs in Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. So they should be able to get there. Should their rushing yards per carry average be less than five and a half? We think that's going to be real trouble for Michigan to get to eight straight up wins. So should that low average be accompanied by lots of sacks allowed, just like last year? Then we think Michigan's in real trouble. Futures. Okay, 2015 College Football National Championship will be determined by playing off four teams chosen by just 13 people, the selection committee. That is the most subjective method of determining the four best teams in college football since before the BCS. So since that process is so new and it's so subjective, we are recommending the, the most conservative approach to national championship futures betting. To get to the, the playoff, I think Michigan would have to go undefeated. And with road trips to Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State, I think that is highly unlikely. So we're not going to have any money, and we're not going to recommend a national championship futures bet on Michigan. Some quick uh, betting facts for Michigan. They're just 20% against the spread versus non-conference teams in away games. Michigan, when they're favored by 10 to 21 points, popular numbers in college or, or in football in general, at home, they're a perfect 5-0 and against the spread under Brady Hope. You know the public loves betting overs for Brady Hoax Michigan teams. The public has been on the over. The majority of the public has bet on the over 92.31% of the time. That's crazy. And yet the under has been correct 53.85% of the time. Uh, That's overall in all their games. And even more unbelievable, the under has been correct 66.67% of the time away. So be careful with those overs on Michigan. Our conclusion Money's not going to be on Michigan for a national championship futures bet. And look to those first three games of the season to really tell us a lot about the last nine against the spread games of their regular season. All right. Awesome. Very valuable info, as always. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. Thanks so much.